We have an interesting one. The Cirrus SR22 went down, had engine problems, spoke with the tower. Tower advised them if they were going to use the parachute system. The pilot decided no. There was an open field. He was going to go for it. While going for the field, he clipped some trees. You can see the damage to the wing and the pilot did not make it. So a tragic one did not use the parachute system and a month ago i asked you know would you guys use it if you had an open field and the engine quit and 84 percent of you said you would try to land in the field without the parachute so very interesting we're going to go over this ntsb final report from mercer tennessee june 21st 2021 while climbing to cruise altitude during a cross-country flight, the pilot advised the tower that the airplane was experiencing engine issues associated with the manifold pressure and had to divert to the airport that they maintained the aircraft at. However, this was not the nearest airport. The pilot further stated that he was not going to declare an emergency. The airplane gradually descended and the controller advised the pilot that a closer airport was located to his right about 10 nautical miles however the pilot continued to the diversion airport about 27 nautical miles when the controller asked if the pilot was going to use the parachute the pilot indicated that he was attempting to land in a field the airplane impacted trees and came to rest in a field about 10 miles from the diversion airport so these are a kind of a cluster of pictures um, of the field and the aircraft and then here it is NTSB had to go ahead and bring it in to look at the engine and then also look up that pilot but again here you can see I don't blame them I mean wide open field here beautiful day a lot of space and open room I don't know how this aircraft ended up clipping the trees but it does look like a viable place to land I'm no pilot but According to Cirrus, engine failure with no runway nearby, they are saying that if a forced landing on a surface other than a runway is required, that CAPS activation is recommended. So very interesting, a lot of gray area here. As far as the engine, a small stainless steel fragment was found wedged between the housing and the valve causing the wastegate in the left turbocharger to close only 75% and they did have maintenance only three months prior where they changed that turbocharger. And here is the flight aware for this uh, flight. And it reminded me of this aircraft that pulled the parachute 250 miles outside of Maui in 2015. Now this is the Coast Guard that went and saved them. But you can see they pulled the parachute and now they have more time to maybe make some calls. Make sure that people are on their way to save them. And then also you can see they got the doors open. They're preparing themselves to have that water landing. But again, over water may be different. Maybe you would pull the parachute automatically over water because it's obviously probably harder to ditch than to pull the parachute and come in nice and flat like them. So they were saved, no injuries. You can see the they, they climbed out and they already had eyes on them from the Coast Guard. So their location was already set. But interesting nonetheless, here's this pilot, 83-year-old male, a lot of hours, 3,568 hours in the Cirrus SR22. And there's uh, some of the engines. There's a Continental engine, 550. But does this change your mind? We had 673 volts. Would you still try to land in the open field? Or would you pull the parachute? Probable cause on this one, a partial loss of engine power due to foreign object debris contamination of the left turbocharger wastegate. Contributing to the accident was the pilot's failure to divert to the nearest airport. So if you want to see another successful uh, parachute, uh, you can watch it here or I'll put it in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for watching. This is Arfalom Keone. I'll see you guys next time.